Hi, everybody. Um, so life is about prioritization. And I think Marisa Mayer, the former, former CEO of uh, Yahoo, uh, got it right, in my opinion. Uh, it's a God family work in that order. And that is uh, what I aspire and strive to keep, that priority. So my name is Haimano Tekye. I'm originally from Eritrea and Ethiopia, but I've lived most of my life in uh, uh, Norway. Uh, I'm 35 and a wife and uh, a mother of those two beautiful babies that are not babies anymore. <laughs> uh, and uh, I spend a lot of time uh, studying um, Jesus and attending various prayer meetings and Bible study. Uh, in a small church that I go to, and taking care of my family, which involves braiding Rebecca's hair. Mm -hmm. So one of the pictures down there, I, I watched like a YouTube um, tutorial on how to make this traditional Eritrean uh, Ethiopian <laughs> braiding for the first time, and I was so proud when I managed. <laughs> so she needed to do that for the culture dog in her school. Um, and I also spend a lot of time trying to be a well-rounded and competent software engineer. Uh, and I currently work at NAV as a senior full-stack developer, uh, which means I'm neither good at front-end or back-end. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> but I've been doing this for eight years, and, uh, it, but it feels like I just got started. Um, what will this do? OK, how do I this, maybe? Yeah. But today, I want to talk to you about my journey um, uh, of learning React uh, and the uh, struggles I faced and what I wish I knew. I remember the first time I <laughs> encountered React. Uh, it was not fun at all. And uh, it was uh, very in the very early days of my career, I was asked to fix a small bug in uh, an existing React application. On the surface, the task seemed very simple, manageable, and, uh, but the issue I was having was uh, this React application was already set up, right? Uh, with NPM, Node, Webpack, Redux, ESLint, Prettier, JSX, and a bunch of other dependencies. I have no idea what they were. Uh, so just imagine the overwhelming feeling my, junior, my poor junior self felt, and uh, my experience up until that point was mainly with Java uh, from school years, and uh, I was mainly doing like a back-end work. Um, and the little front-end I did was with Swing, right? So that's Java still. Um, so looking at this React application, I uh, it felt like I was being thrown into a maze without a map. Um, so one of the most difficult, uh, lear uh, difficult parts of learning React for me was the fact that I was being introduced to so many things all at once. Um, I had issues trying to start the application locally, and I got help with that. And then, OK, I had issues with uh, knowing where to make a change, and I got help with that as well. And then when I finally made my change, Okay, I can use that. Um, yeah. So <laughs> ESLint <laughs> screamed, and I had no idea what, it, what I did wrong, but I got help with that as well. So with a, a whole lot of like hand-holding from colleagues, I completed the task, but uh, I was left with very little understanding and a lot of frustration and confusion. And I remember when uh, some developers were talking about, you know, the benefits of React. Uh, React is very fast, uh, it uses this virtual DOM, uh, it doesn't operate on the actual DOM uh, to, uh, to make the change, and that makes it fast. And I was like, okay, that flew right over my head because uh, I did not know much about the real DOM, <laughs> leave alone the virtual one. So uh, what I was, <laughs> what I'm trying to get across is that not having a good understanding of the fundamentals of web development was a big hurdle in my journey. So, okay, I needed to learn React properly. So I decided, okay, let me find some tutorials. Some people suggested uh, Egghead.io uh, with some short videos there. Okay, I watched them. 
and there were some YouTube tutorials, and uh, there were even some cartoon-based um, tutorials on Redux. But m all of those things didn't work well for me because, and my frustration, like Brian Holt, uh, one of my favorite instructors in uh, Frontend Masters, he captured my frustrations very well when he talked about his experience. And what he said was, um, my problem with many tutorials was that they jumped over steps 1 to 13 and they started at step 14. And that was exactly how I was feeling with most of the tutorials. Uh, most of the tutorials assumed that I already knew a lot, which I did not. And they jumped, they often jumped right into like building a small application or a small example. Uh, without properly talking about how did they set their projects up and uh, what are the different tools surrounding this React thing were and what were they for. So what I wish I realized early on was uh, I wish I knew, okay, I need a lot more structured and step-by-step -step approach to learning rather than just watching a bunch of small tutorials here and there and trying to piece what I learned together afterwards. So as you can see, my struggle with React was not really the React itself, because React is a small UI library, right? But my issue was with the ecosystem around and, and the tooling around React. Um, and that's what made things difficult for me. So um, and also the fact that I did not know about web development, right? That's a whole thing for itself. So uh, that added to my challenge. But these are my heroes <laughs> from Front End Masters. I actually met uh, Kyle Simpson and Ken C. Dodds in one conference, and I just have to calm myself down, stop <laughs> behaving like a fangirl. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so the turning point for me was um, when I came across uh, Front End Masters. This is um, a learning platform, it's subscription based, but I do ask my uh, employers to please pay for <laughs> uh, for the for the subscription fee because um, it, this is necessary uh, for my work. And um, my favorite part of the platform is this learning path. And uh, the first thing I did when I got there was I ate a piece of my humble pie and started at the beginning. <laughs> And uh, and then uh, you know the first course there that I took was complete intro to web development by Brian Holt, and this course it's about like 12 hours long, so I watched it with like 2x speed and then slowed down on the parts that I that were new to me. Um, and uh, after that, I watched some getting started with JavaScript by Kyle Simpson. Uh, I watched another JavaScript course called JavaScript from Fundamentals to Functional uh, by Bianca. And uh, I also took some courses on Node.js by Scott Moss and Full Stack Development by Jem Young and some testing by Ken C. Dodds. Um, so, and, and I still use this platform today also because it always updates uh, the courses when new versions of the tools come. Um, and this, uh, after I, was, I covered uh, like the fundamental things, uh, then I went to watch this React course by Brian Holt. Uh, it was called like uh, Complete Intro to React. And uh, I don't know how readable <laughs> this is, but uh, those are like the different steps, right? So um, the course was super hands-on, and the best part, it does not jump steps. <laughs> So, and after a short introduction uh, uh, as to what React was, uh, he uh, went right into like the tools surrounding React. And um, he spoke about uh, what those tools were, how to configure them, set them up to get started with, new with a new project. And, um, and then only then after like on step 14 did he start to speak about Redux, right? So. Um, uh, like I started on the wrong end of things when I was trying to learn this thing. Um, so, uh, and also when it comes to the toolings, he doesn't go in depth into like e each tooling because that would be like super time consuming. Uh, but he gives you like enough to cover uh, what they are and uh, what you need them for and how to set them up 
and if you need to dig deeper, front end masters have courses on those as well. Um, so now looking at an existing React application was not as daunting as it was in, uh, in the beginning. And I can't tell you how uh, rewarding that feeling is uh, to know that you're not just navigating and moving in the dark. Um, so that's, I'm super grateful for that. Another thing that I think would have helped me um, uh, was like if I could just take a step back and draw a parallel between the Java ecosystem that I was familiar with and compare it to the new Re Re uh, React ecosystem that I was trying to um, learn. So, of course, this uh, comparison has its limitation uh, because there are two different uh, uh, Java and, and React or JavaScript. They serve different purposes, but uh, it would have been helpful. So, if we take like building and packaging in the React world, we use you know uh, bundlers like Webpack or Vite, uh, and in the Java world, we'd use uh, Maven. So. Bundlers in the React world, they uh, bundle our JavaScript files, CSS files, other assets that we might have, and uh, optimize it to be um, loaded to the browser. In the Java world, Maven would do like you know the compiling of the Java code, handling dependencies, and packaging everything into a jar. And um, this can then be ex executed in the server. But when it, com uh, when it comes to depends dependency management, um, in the React world, we have NPM, uh, and then uh, we have all the dependencies coming in. Uh, well the dependencies are listed in this package JSON file, and uh, it's pulled from NPM's registry. Um, in the Java world, we have uh, Maven. Uh, the dependency is listed in POM XML, and it's pulled uh, from Maven Central. So there's some similarity there. And for development and runtime environment uh, in the React world, we use Node.js uh, to both build and run JavaScript outside of the browser in our computers. Uh, and then uh, in the Java world, we would have JDK and JRE. Um, so, and when it comes to code styling, uh, ESLint is used in the in the React world, and check style is like serves similar purposes in the Java world. Code formatter, um, Prettier does that for the JavaScript world. Uh, and uh, in the Java world, as far as I know at least, it's uh, the uh, ID, or you can set up your ID to, um, to format, auto format your code. When it comes to core structural unit, in the React world, uh, you have components. And components, they can be class-based, as they were in the beginning. And uh, we have functional uh, components uh, today as well. Um, that's which is more widely used. And uh, this leads me to my next hurdle uh, that I wish I had un understood better earlier. You know, in Java, I would typically um, create a class. I would uh, instantiate an object, and I would use methods to mutate the state of that object. In React, however, regardless if it is class-based or functional, I cannot directly mutate the state of the component. The state is immutable, and uh, if I need to change the state of a component, I, um, I just have to tell React to do it. So React handles that for me. Um, so in React, I would use you know uh, set state if it's a class-based component, or use state hook if it's functional component to uh, do the mm, uh, to to do the state change. And React then creates a new version of the state and uh, merges it with the previous state and re-renders the component with the new updated state. And all of this is happening without my involvement involvement as a programmer. In Java, I was used to managing both um, state and behavior imp uh, imperatively. I was used to, explic to explicitly saying to Java, uh, I want you to, to update this. Uh, I mean, I, I want you to, to do those steps to update the state of this object. 
but in React, state is managed uh, declaratively, and when state is updated, it automatically triggers UI re-render or UI changes without me having to explicitly say that. So this shift in paradigm required, you know, a change in mindset, and it took me a good while to adjust. And with you know, with this, uh, with React's approach, you end up with a lot simpler or a cleaner code, but you do have to let go of some control. Um, another area that challenged me was understanding um, the asynchronous programming in JavaScript. In Java, I was mostly used to um, synchronous programming. I call a method, uh, I wait for it to return, and then I move on to the next. And of course, I've learned about threads and uh, you know multi-threaded stuff in university, but I hardly used that in the Java world. But in JavaScript, um, things are different. Uh, fetching data uh, from an API is done synchroni uh, asynchronously without blocking the UI. And the promises and async await are make those things possible. But uh, I did not know this at, at the time. And this is one of like the courses that really were helpful for me to understand that. Um, uh, this Will sentence, uh, he had a course called JavaScript, the hard part. Uh, so this was super helpful for me. So um, what I wished I knew uh, that would have made my journey in learning React a lot more enjoyable. Uh, it was uh, the extreme importance of building the solid foundation in JavaScript, the DOM, and uh, the modern web development before jumping into React and Redux. Um, so if I could go back to this er early days, I would assure myself uh, that I was uh, struggling with React in the front-end world, not because I was slow, <laughs> but because there is a lot going on. Front-end is not any longer about just making a button pretty or changing colors. It's a whole thing. Uh, and I tell myself, take your time to learn those basics. It will save you a lot of frustration in the long run. And my humble request to those crazy, busy senior developers working uh, with or mentoring junior developers. Uh, I would say please be patient and gentle with helping the juniors to uh, grasp the fundamentals uh, and do it step by step. That's a key word, step by step. Uh, please don't, o don't try to offload the knowledge you have accumulated uh, in the past 10 years within 10 minutes, right? <laughs> so, uh, and your guidance can make all the difference. So thank you for your attention. <laughs> And that was my talk. Thank you.